Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Steve Freeman Podcast. Today's episode brought to you by Performance Inspired Nutrition. Feel better, get healthy, lose some weight. I want to tell you about a special right now. They are running a weight management bundle. You can manage your weight. It's never been easier. Let Performance Inspired help with their weight management bundle. Now, in this bundle, it's going to provide the extra support you need to not only reach your health goals, but to exceed them. Inside this bundle, you're going to get a t-shirt because when you're losing weight, you want to look awesome. And nothing makes you look more awesome than a performance-inspired shirt. It's exactly like the one that Mark Wahlberg wears. The t-shirt is essential to losing weight. But then you get down to the real stuff. You're going to get a performance-inspired branded blender bottle. Plus, you're going to get what I use. You're going to get one of the diet and energy uh, ripped whey protein uh, jugs with all of the powder in it. It's awesome. I take it every single morning. You're going to get one of the CLA capsule bundles that you take two of these every morning. Plus, you're going to get the diet and energy capsules, and you're going to get a box, count them, box 12 of the performance uh, inspired keto bars. Now, this bundle is everything you need to get on your way to living a more healthy, active lifestyle and to lose weight. I can't say enough good about the diet and energy ripped whey protein shakes that I drink every morning. I have my little shaker bottle. Um, I pour in eight ounces of milk. Then I pour in this powder. I mix it up. And man, does it taste good. It keeps me full throughout the day. It gives my body everything that it needs that I don't normally eat by eating enough vegetables like I should. It's got everything in the world that you need. And instead of trying to piecemeal all of this stuff together, Performance Inspired has made it very easy by putting together a bundle. You can find it at pi-nutrition.com. Check and check out, select the weight management bundle. There are also so other bundles that include things like uh, the wealth, uh, health and beauty collagen uh, system uh, for men and women. You can check that out. A lot of different bundles. But I'm telling you, weight loss is on everybody's mind right now because of the lockdown and the quarantine. Everybody's put on a few extra. If you want to get rid of those and you want to feel better, all natural products from Performance Inspired, go to PINutrition.com. That's PI-Nutrition.com and check out the weight management bundle. When you get to check out, enter code Steve to get 10% off of your order. Performance Inspired, PI-Nutrition.com. Dot com. We're also brought to you by ArtistDevelopmentAcademy.com. Learn from the best. All of the courses and instruction are taught by hit songwriters, producers, engineers, label and publishing company executives that have reached the highest levels of success in the music business. Take advantage of our combined experience of knowing what has worked to launch and guide some of the careers of the most successful major and independent artists. All access members get uh, access to our entire online course library. Go back and watch any course you want. Plus, you get access to a brand new course that is uploaded every single month coming in June. It is all related to YouTube and how artists, singers, songwriters, producers can capitalize on YouTube to grow your fan base and make money. Plus, with your membership, you get pro feedback. You want to post your work. You want to ask some of our producers and our instructors and songwriters what we think about your music. You can post it in our members only forum. Uh, you can join our monthly members only exclusive live streams where you can ask our instructors questions and get the answers that you need. All of it can be found at artistdevelopmentacademy.com. And I'm telling you what, an all-access member membership, extremely affordable. It's $150 for the year or it's $19 a month. And no matter which one you choose, when you get to check out, enter Steve, and you're going to get 30% off of your all-access membership. You get everything for that. You, you can't even hardly distribute an album for that. I and mean, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So if you want to grow your, your career in the music business, you want to learn how to make money with your music, more importantly, not about becoming famous. I'm talking about becoming successful. The first step for you is to start at artistdevelopmentacademy.com. Don't forget, when you choose your level of membership, whether it's monthly or annual, enter Steve at checkout in the coupon code section, and you will immediately get 30% off your order and your membership at artistdevelopmentacademy.com.
Those of you that have followed along with my journey with music distribution and testing a lot of platforms out, I've had videos out on YouTube. Uh, Some of you may have seen those on Ditto. I've got a little bit of an update for you. Plus, I want to broaden and open this subject of music distribution up, and I want to talk about it in depth today on the podcast. So don't go anywhere. We've got a great episode ahead for you today on the Steve Freeman Podcast. You're listening to the Steve Freeman Podcast, the real raw truth about the pursuit of success in music, business, and life. Here's your host, hit songwriter, multi-platinum selling producer, and serial entrepreneur, Steve Freeman. So for those of you following along at home, you probably have seen what's going on between me and the digital music uh, distributor. Ditto. Um, I think they're a trash piece of shit company. I was going to try to mince my words and, and come up with a nicer way to put it, but they're not. They're just a shitty fucking company. Period. End of story. If you have your music with Ditto, you need to remove your music, write down your ISRC numbers, and go to a different distributor. And honestly, I yes, I have my druthers. I have the digital uh, distribution companies that I prefer. I'm not going to push any. Now, I'm going to tell you who I like, but I don't care. If you're with Ditto, get your music away from Ditto. And if, if if you are completely, you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, go to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash the Steve Freeman and look for my series on Ditto. And I had a severe issue. I, I was actually asked by a friend to check out Ditto as a music distributor. So in the process of developing some of the artists that we work with, I said, okay, well, we've got some new releases come out. Uh, They look cool, seem cool. Uh, Let's give them a shot and see how it works out. Well, long story short, it didn't work out at all. They locked us out of our account. They never paid us for uh, the sales uh, that we had accumulated. Uh, It all started with an email that had something to do with fraudulent streaming. I went back and sent emails. Number one, you can't communicate. They want to communicate through Twitter. Any company that is worth a grain of salt is not going to have their customer service only available through Twitter. Bullshit. You can't. There's no phone number. The Nashville office they had closed. They're a UK based company. And. What we had done is is had a very effective marketing campaign for this artist we were working for with running Snapchat, Instagram story, Facebook ads pointing uh, in different geographical areas straight to this new project to uh, build up streams on Spotify. It's the exact same process that all of the major labels use. We were doing nothing. Matter of fact, I was taking a chapter out of one of the the, uh, um, releases that a major label had out at the time, and we were basically mimicking what they were doing. And... But for us, the music got pulled down for, quote unquote, illegal streaming. Now, after three weeks of trying to get a hold of somebody, um, I finally got an email. And you can see all of this in the videos. Um, And basically, they said, "Okay, we took a look and we realized that you were you were not buying streams or streaming illegally or having fraudulent streams. We can see that now. What we would like to do is we would like to refund your money that you paid. Um, And then we would also like to extend you free service for three years. And I said, not only no, but hell no, Uh, I'm not putting myself through this. I'm not putting any artists that I work with or that I develop or that I produce through this because this is not right. Thank you. But no, thank you. And I also attached that email. I said, hey, by the way, you still owe us money for the sales. Forget streams. We sold physical product and you owe us that money. And more importantly, it's not that you owe it to me. You owe it to the artist. And they stopped communicating altogether. So I started doing the videos and the videos have bothered them. Now, I've been over this for a while, for a good year, because this has been going on for two, two and a half years. I, I was I've been over it. I could care less. I have moved on. I have a major distribution deal that anything that I want to do, I can put through that distribution deal if I want. But I also was looking for another independent distributor that we could use and put smaller projects through, but that would be safe, that we could implore our marketing uh, strategies that we do without the fear of Spotify or anybody else thinking that we had we're buying streams or anything like that, which I've said adamantly over and over and over again when I've talked to you guys, do not buy streams. Do not pay bots to stream your music because it turns into nothing. It means literally and absolutely zero, because how does that help you? If you're out there and you're buying streams and eventually this COVID bullshit's over and you want to go out and play a show 
And you've you've told the venue owner that, oh, well, we've got 350,000 streams on our new single in the last six weeks. And that venue owner or promoter goes fucking awesome. That means people are going to show up. These we didn't we weren't aware of you, but other people are. So we're going to pay you a thousand bucks to come in and play for, for two and a half, three hours. Well, when you get there. Nobody's going to show up because all those streams are bought and paid for. All of your your streams are, are fraudulent. They're fake. There's nobody really behind them. So look, buying streams does you no good because at some point, the reality is going to have to match the perception at some point. And that's where you ultimately want it to lead to. You want it to lead to your streaming numbers showing popularity so that you can book live shows. When you book live shows and nobody shows up, that makes you look 10 times worse than a fake streaming number makes you look to a venue owner. OK, so don't buy streams. So some time went by and I just dropped the entire thing. I, I did. Well, this past weekend. On Twitter. Now, I also, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. I don't use Twitter. So if those of you that tag me in stuff on Twitter, there is a 10% chance that I'm going to see it. Everything that we do, whether it's through the podcast or whether it's a video we're uploading to YouTube, we will share it to Twitter. But very rarely am I actually on Twitter, like log into the app and look and see what's going on. It just so happened, just so happened that I logged into Twitter last Saturday and somebody had tagged me in a post because they had seen one of my three videos that I did walking everybody through exactly what happened with Ditto. And so somebody tagged me and I happened to see it. And it was like, this is so-and-so put out an article saying that Ditto was an amazing distributor, blah, blah, blah. That was some news article or entertainment music business, some bullshit that, that named Ditto in the top three distributors. They tagged me and say, hey, at the Steve Freeman, what do you think about this? And I simply commented back that I wouldn't, I would not pay or use Ditto to distribute toilet paper. That was my comment. Almost immediately. The founder and CEO of Ditto responded back and immediately wanted to go personal with it. And I was trying to stay very factual. And we had this Twitter war go on for about two and a half hours on Saturday. And I finally got down to the because he finally brought up. He's like, your videos, you said this, you did that. And I said, yes, tell me anything that I said that was not 100 percent factually accurate. Crickets. Nothing. And he kept wanting to to go back and forth. And I said, look, all I have asked for since the very beginning of this thing was some customer service, some communication and some explanation. That is all I've wanted. And I said, I will make you a deal. I said, you have my contact information. If you want to contact me about this, feel free to give me a call. You've had my contact information for two and a half years. And I said, look, Here's what I'll make you a deal. You contact me. You give me the communication that I deserve and the the explanation of why your company has done did what they did, which also side note, I've heard from literally thousands of you guys since this happened and, and that have watched my videos on this subject. I've heard from literally thousands of you that Ditto has done the exact same thing too. Okay, so this was not just, this happened to Steve, poor Steve. Fuck that, I don't give a shit. The the amount of money was minuscule. I don't even care, somebody said something in the comments about you know about being about the money. I don't care if it's a dollar 25. I don't care if it's three fucking cents. When you are take on the responsibility of distributing music and they sell that music, you owe that money to the artist. I don't give a fuck who you are or who you think you are or locking people out of the accounts for whatever reason. I don't even care if you think that these people set up a bot and were buying their own pro, uh, uh, projects. I don't give a shit. You, they were paid for. You owe that money to the label. You owe that money to the artist, period, end of story. I said, so all I've asked for is communication. All I've asked for is an explanation. And all I have asked is for you to pay the artist the money that you owe. Set streaming aside. And whatever you think about streaming, I'm talking about the physical sales from iTunes, from Google Play, from from all of the different sales outlets. You owe the artist that money. I said, you contact me 
and you give me the communication, you give me the explanation, and you pay me what you owe me to pay these artists for the songs that they did sell while they were up in the stores, because I have the sound scan numbers. I know exactly the amount that they sold. I said, you give me that, I will take down the three videos. His response to me was, that sounds fair. Now, this was over the holiday weekend, the what was it, Memorial Day weekend. He said, that sounds fair. Um, we're on a holiday weekend. I will give you a call on Tuesday and we will get this worked out. I said, great, you do that. I'll take down the videos bashing your company. Guess what? He never called. That tells you what you're dealing with. Folks, we have talked about this many times. The music business is a piece of shit business. It is operated under the table. It, there are so many, there's so many more bad people in this business and bad business people in this business than you will ever find good people. I understand. I totally get and understand why so many of you are apprehensive when it comes to dealing with people. What I get sick and tired of is you guys want to go cheap your way through this and cheap your way through that, and you end up getting fucked over and screwed at every turn. And then you come to me, and you're like, oh, I, you charge too much. It's like, no, you should have started here. You get what you pay for. I understand you being apprehensive, because there are when you get off the bus, so to speak, and you come to Nashville, or you go to Los Angeles, there are people waiting there to screw you. They are the sharks in the business. But I'm telling you, sharks are only attracted to the blood that's in the water. So you guys stop cutting yourselves and bleeding in the water. I know when you get here, you want to talk a big game and we've got money to do this and we've got money to do that. When you do that, you are cutting yourself and bleeding in the water. The good people are not going to come running to you. You have to seek us out. I'm not ever going to approach you and say, hey, I can do this for you. I can do this for you. And it, I don't do that. People come to me. I don't have to go to anybody. The problem is people always come to me when they've been fucked over five times and they automatically assume that I'm going to fuck them over too. When if you've ever talked to any single artist that I have ever worked with, they will tell you that has never happened. Now, sure, back when I owned a record label several years ago, Every artist on that label would have something bad to say about me and the record label this day to, to this day. Because they only see what didn't happen for them or didn't work out for them. They don't look and see and go, my God, over four years, this label spent five hundred thousand dollars on me. They did this. They did that. They don't see any of that. And they, they certainly most certainly don't look and see the, the things that didn't happen for them, a lot of times point right back to them. They would not make themselves available. They would not quit a job. And I'm sorry, there are times, if you want to take this seriously, how many times have I said it? You cannot expect a full-time success on a part-time effort in the music business or on anything. Fuck this whole term about side hustle. I get so tired of hearing and and I love Gary V, but I hate the word hustle, even though I've got a neon sign in the next room that says it. It was bought as a gift. I'm trying to be nice. Plus, it looks cool. It's a neon sign. It looks cool. But I get tired of all these people talking about hustling because for me, the word hustle all goes back for me all the way back to like the color of money with Paul Newman and Tom Cruise. It's always gone back to a negative connotation that you are hustling somebody out of something. I don't like that word. Grind, I don't mind the word grind. Hard work, it's going to take it. But a lot of times when, when artists have been screwed over, now look, I know it happens all the time and you're, you're just, I, I, have, I have thousands of stories that I could tell. Horror stories of artists that have been screwed over. But I will tell you one thing that's unique to almost every single one of those individual stories is that about 30, 40% into the relationship, the artist knew they were getting screwed, but they were afraid to walk away because they didn't have something to run to. That is a dangerous thing in our business. It's also a dangerous thing in any other business. If you realize you are in a bad situation, Get out of that situation. I deal with it with songwriters all the time that are stuck in bad publishing deals. 
unless you've had a major cut, any publishing deal is a bad publishing deal. I'm just going to be real honest with you because you, what they are going to be able to do for you is never going to match your expectation level. You sign with a publishing company and you think you're going to get cuts. 90% chance you're not, especially those of you signing to these meaningless bullshit little independent publishing companies that are playing music business. It's just the fact, I, it, Steve, you're being mean. Yes, I am being mean. Unfortunately, in this circumstance, mean is truthful. It's a hard pill to swallow. But you get you guys get into these situations and you're afraid to leave because you would rather stay in a bad situation than not have any situation. And I can tell you how many times have you guys heard it? The, the thing goes for record deals. It goes for publishing deals. It goes for everything else. Not a, no deal at all is better than a bad deal. And I, I see this with songwriters all the time. It's like they are in a bad situation. Uh, it's not working out. They're not, their expectations aren't being met and they don't know what to do. They have an opportunity to get out of that situation, to get out of that deal, but they won't because they're scared to death. They would rather stay in a bad situation than have to tell people they don't have a publishing deal. That's just the truth. And I, and I cannot, I cannot stress enough that life is too short. Your career is too short to spend time in horrible, non-profitable situations. And when I talk about profit, I'm not necessarily talking about money. I'm not talking about physical monetary gain. I'm talking about uh, well-being, mindset, um, drive, determination, passion, uh, the achievement of goals. All of those things matter and all of those things and those of you in this business know that a lot of times a lot of the reward or the gain that you get in a positive way is not so much financial as it is internal. Um, there are a lot of times where you can have success in this business, but that success does not mean you made money. I've said before that in this business, one thing I've learned in 20 years is that the credit for something successful is often more valuable than the financial gain associated with that success. One of the things that I've been able to do in my career is I have been able to turn those successes that were not financially successful, but were successful in stature. I've been able to turn those opportunities into financial gain for myself. Because here's the thing. Just because something may be successful, but it wasn't financially successful, that success is valuable to somebody else in some other way that may be financially successful. I've produced records in the past that have got that, that I, I, in all honesty, I was doing a favor for the artist. I wasn't really thinking about a business aspect or business financial position. I, I was really, I dug what the artists did. I thought they were talented. I knew that if we matched my talent with their talent, we could create something special. I've been in that situation where we didn't have a contract and these records go on and sell hundreds of thousands of copies. I didn't make any money from those, but I used the, the sales success of those to charge more and do the contracts properly next time. And here's the other thing that, that I want to bring up about this, and I think this is very important. No matter if it's you, the songwriter, you, the artist, you, the producer, it, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes things just don't happen. You can line up everything perfectly. You can have the best voice. You can have the best producer. You can have the best record label. You can have a million dollars to spend in marketing. You can have it all lined up and it not work right. You can do everything right and it not succeed. So you can't always plan on that. You can't always think that if I've got every duck in a row, there's no way this thing can fail. Let me tell you, there are a million five hundred thousand four hundred and thirty one ways that it can fail. And if it's possible for it to find one of those, it will. The odds of you succeeding, especially financially, are, are far less than being able to find success without the financial, the financial gain being attached to that. I hope you're sticking with me, and I hope you understand that. There's, there's an important lesson to learn here. 
Everything that you do may not always be financially successful. It doesn't mean that it's not successful. And the best of you and the best of us will learn how to take that success and parlay that success into money. Now, I am honored. I am, I am honored to be able to have multi-platinum selling producer attached to my name. But I'm going to tell you something about me that's a little different. I'm not a multi-platinum selling producer because I've produced one, two, or three of these huge albums on these huge artists. The reason I'm able to call myself a multi-platinum selling art, uh, producer is because I've produced a thousand artists who've sold 10 million records. I, 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 that is one of the things that I did really well is I, I discovered really quickly that I didn't want to focus on working with two or three or four or five major artists and try to get all of my success to ride on the coattails of these five people. I realized really quickly that for me, the answer to that problem was to work with as many different people as I could, to involve myself with as many different songwriters, as many different artists, and as many different genres, and as many different countries as humanly possible. This all became very clear to me, and I'll tell you a quick story. This, uh, this and I'm letting you into me. This is my insight. If you want to know how I get asked all the time, how do you do what you do? How do you tick? I'm going to tell you what happened to me. Um, about 12 years ago, I met, I was set up to write with this guy. And um, we were about 30 minutes into the write. And I said, I, I gotta, I'm going to step outside and smoke for a second. So I stepped outside and I called my wife. And I said, I, I don't know if I can do this. I really don't fucking like this guy. He's just got this attitude. He's from South Africa. He's got that accent. He just acts like he's better than me. And I don't know. This isn't going to work. I just don't like the guy. My wife's like, get back in there. Serve the song. Don't worry about whether or not you like him or y'all are going to get along or if you'll ever be in another room together or ever speak to each other ever again. Go in there and do what you do best. And you guys write a great song. Now, this is just me. I don't know if I've ever told this story before. Um, this is me just being honest with you. I did not like this guy at all because I have a big ego. Surprise. Surprise. I know. I have a big ego. I'm a big presence. I'm a big guy. Um, and I will admit that I, my ego a lot of times walks into a room 10 to 15, 20 minutes before I do. I get that. But that's me. That's how I am. That's how I will always be. It's how I've always been. And in all honesty, where that comes from is it comes from not being appreciated for the first 10 to 15 years of my professional life, constantly being stepped on, constantly being screwed over. That's where that it comes from. Insecurity is look, I'm laying it all out on the table here for you. So I hope you're appreciating this. That comes from depression. It comes from not finding your value. Uh, there's a hole in me somewhere that I try to fill constantly, whether it's with cars or buying shit. I don't know what it is. I was adopted. Some people say that when you're adopted and you don't, you know, you don't know your complete history, that it leaves a hole and you try to fill it with other things. Luckily, I fill that with work. I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs. I've never drank. I've drank, but I don't drink. Um, so I never filled it with those things. I filled it with things that boosted my ego. And so when I ever felt like that got trampled on, then I would even try to, it made that hole bigger and I would try to fill it more. So when I walk into another room with, a, with another person who has a type A personality, I don't often do well because our egos are at war with each other and the product always suffers. Okay, so we're back in the room. I get back in the room and we end up writing a song that we both really liked. Now, we were in that room for maybe three and a half, four hours. Right about the time we finished the, the chorus on the song, I started to like this guy. And for whatever reason, we just, we, we I don't know if we just, it wasn't a vocal thing or if we both just let our guard down, we both just let the walls go down. Maybe it was just me and I'm willing to accept maybe it was all me. Maybe I was projecting on this guy. 
But the wall started to come down as, as the song got better. And we started appreciating each other for what we were contributing in the room. Now, fast forward 12 years. This guy is my best friend to this day. He is my brother. I would take a bullet for him. I would do anything. He could call me right now. I'm in the middle of, of, of filming and recording this podcast. If my phone rang and it said David Aldo, I would stop what I'm doing right now and pick that phone up. If he needed me, I would be there. And I know the exact same from his side. We went from, from I, I've never asked David how he felt, but, but I know that I didn't like him when I met him very well. And, but to this, to fast forward 12 years, we've written five number one singles together. And how I want to tie this together and, and how this opened my mind, everything changed for me. My life changed. Uh, my set of friends changed. My outlook on the music business all changed when I met David. Because the song that we wrote that night ended up being on the first album that we worked together on, that we co produced together called the Halfway to Memphis album. Now, David lives in South Africa, and he's known as the artist of the stars because when Elton John or Oprah or Tom Cruise or Ashton Kutcher, any of those A-list celebrities out there have a party, they call my buddy David to go perform at the party or at their weddings, or he does private events for Google and Nissan and Mercedes-Benz all over the world. He toured with Lionel Richie. Um, he was the uh, front man for Blood, Sweat, and Tears for four years. So he, he knows what he's doing and he's huge. He's from South Africa, but he lives in Los Angeles and he's huge in South Africa. Well, I never thought I'm more like anybody when it comes to the music business. If it's not happening on uh, Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles, uh, it's not happening in Beverly Hills. It's not happening on, on 16th, 17th or 18th Avenue here in Nashville. And it doesn't mean a damn thing. That was my whole attitude was the United States. It's got to be on the charts here. It's got to make sense here. It's got to be successful here or it doesn't matter. When I met David, all of that changed because when we released the first three or four singles off that album, they all went to number one in South Africa. They were played everywhere on Jacaranda, Algoa FM, um, all of the huge radio stations and, and networks in South Africa, which bled over into the UK, which bled over into Africa and Ireland and, and Scotland, uh, all over the world, everywhere but the United States. But it all started with his home country of South Africa. And we started making money off of those songs coming and playing for, you know, the, the royalties from the radio airplay in South Africa. Now, anytime a song, went to number one that we wrote, it was good for about, you know, three thirty five hundred to forty five hundred five thousand dollars for each of us for that going number one in the radio airplay in South Africa. David and I sat down and we said, you know, we're both really focused on the United States. Why, if we're making five thousand dollars a piece. In one country. Why are we not focused on making it number one in 10 other countries so that if we make $5,000 each of us in 10 different countries, that's $50,000 per song that we make. And instead of trying to make this thing a huge success, let's go after the money instead of going after the acclaim or going after the credit or going after people thinking that it's a huge chart success in the United States, which we knew was an uphill battle and was going to cost more to happen than either one of us was going to make. So it changed my mentality. I've sold millions of records overseas. I've sold millions of records on artists that you will never hear of. So whenever I'm asked to prove myself, a lot of times people don't understand what I'm talking about because you've never heard of David Aldo. But yet he can sell 50,000 seats in a soccer stadium in Cape Town, South Africa. I say all this to say that it's about mentality. It's how you think about success. It's how you define success. And when I met David, it changed my world. It changed my profession, uh, my professional life for sure. And that is how I started approaching things. It wasn't about, oh, God, I would have produced the next Tim McGraw record so that I can be the next big, huge record producer. No, I would rather produce 25 artists you've never heard of 
That gives me 25 opportunities at success versus producing the one artist that everybody knows. That has been how I have operated my business. Now, a lot of times that doesn't come with all of the accolades um, of working with these huge artists. Now, because of some of the success that I've had, I've had the opportunity to work with some really, really big artists. I don't prefer to do that. I still, to this day, would prefer to produce five or six, seven, eight, nine albums a year on people you've never heard of than to work with one established artist. I feel like the creation process, the creative process is more creative. I feel like there's more to gain. I feel like there's a bigger upside because I here's something I want to say. And we're, I know we're getting way off topic here, and I hope I'm not losing you guys over this. But here's the one thing that I have done consistently that has allowed me to find certain levels of success that I know you guys want to find. And if I look over my entire career and it comes back to one thing, what can I say was the one thing that enabled me to accomplish the things that I wanted to accomplish while continuing to still reach even new new and greater heights as I move along and as I get older? The one thing is that I always bet on myself. Always. I never took my chips and bet them on someone else. I always bet on myself. Because when you bet on yourself, you are the one responsible for making it come to fruition or not. Every decision that you make is either good or bad based on the decision you make. The mindset and the framework that you bring to the situation. And not trying to attach yourself or your coattails to somebody else's coattails or putting your chips behind somebody else's at the roulette table on the roulette wheel or the the craps table where you're just betting the line. I never did that. I bet on myself. Now, along with that is that you have to learn to accept the failure when you fail, because I've said this before, I have failed a thousand times more than I've been successful. But I know that I would not have had the opportunities to have the successes that I have had without all of those other failures. Every failure that I've ever had has led to a success. Now, not always is that success greater than the failure, but it gets you out of the hole and it keeps you moving. I've said before that you as a business owner, as an artist, songwriter, producer, engineer, whatever, your sole job is to get up every morning and go stand in the middle of the road. If success is a semi truck or on the train tracks, if success is a freight train. Your job is not to know when that truck or when that train is coming or from which direction it's coming from. Your job is solely to get up every day and go place yourself in the middle of that road, in the middle of those tracks, so that no matter when it comes by, no matter which direction it's coming from, you're standing in the middle of the track when it hits you. There are going to be days when you get up and you go and you stand on the tracks and the train doesn't come. There are going to be months. There are going to be years where you do your job and it's going to be hard some days to get up and walk and just stand in the middle of that road or in the middle of that track. There are days you're going to get up. There are months you're going to get up. There are years you're going to get up and you're going to go stand in the middle of that road in the middle of those tracks and you're going to walk until your feet fucking bleed and you're never going to see the truck. The train never seems to come until it does. And so often I see people that do this and they get up for days, months, years And they go and they stand in the middle of the road or they stand in the middle of the tracks and they walk one direction or the other. And after a certain period of time, we all get frustrated. We all get discouraged. We all get depressed. We all get down. I can't tell you the number of times that I've seen when people do that. It's the one day they wake up and they go, fuck it. I'm done. That's the day they wake up and they're not in the middle of the road. They're not in the middle of the tracks. And after all these years of work, they have to watch that truck or that train go right by while they're standing on the side of the fucking road. 
If it is to be, it's up to me. Guys, girls, get up every day. No matter how hard it is, no matter that you have don't have a train or, or truck schedule that shows you the exact time and date when that train or that truck is coming, no matter the fact that you can't see it, you can't see the smoke from the, the stack on the train, no matter any of that, get up and put yourself in the middle of the road. Get up, put yourself in the middle of the tracks. It's so important. Nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows how or when or to what level you're going to be successful. But I do know that you're never going to be successful unless you get up and place yourself in the middle of those tracks every single day. That you can do. It's going to be hard. It is hard. This business is, like I said earlier, it's a piece of shit. Hunter S. Thompson has a great quote uh, about the music business. And it, I, I'll paraphrase it, but it basically it's, it's, it's like a, a dirty hallway full of pimps and thieves. Um, and then there's a bad side. You can look up the quote. Um, and that's true. We as creatives, we feed off of the success. We feed off of the love and affection and approval of others. And sometimes when we don't get that, it's very difficult to get up every day and run to the middle of the road or run to the middle of the tracks and walk one way or the other. It's tiresome. And it doesn't always come when we need it to or when we want it to. But again, just stand in the road. No matter where you are right now, no matter what you're going through in your life, no matter what's going on in your personal life, bet on you. Every single day, bet on you. Guys, thank you for joining me for another episode. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast no matter where you're listening. Leave us a written review on Apple Podcasts and iTunes. Uh, Rate us those five stars. Don't forget the show notes uh, for anything and everything we've talked about today. You can find them at thestevefreeman.com. Follow me on social media at thestevefreeman. And please visit our sponsors. Go check out the weight management bundle from Performance Inspired Nutrition, pi-nutrition.com. Enter code Steve at checkout. Get 10% off. Also, artistdevelopmentacademy.com. Learn more. Take your career. You want to get up and get in the middle of that track or that road every single day? The Artist Development Academy is a great way to do that and continue to learn and continue to grow. Help you get where you want to be to be ready when that train or that truck comes. Okay? So go check out ArtistDevelopmentAcademy.com. Get an all-access membership. Enter code Steve at checkout and get 30% off. It Basically, with 30% off, You're kind of stupid if you don't do it because it's so much content, so much value for less than a a cup of Starbucks coffee every day uh, for a month. Seriously. I mean, it rounds out to like a hundred bucks a year or something like that. Seriously. I mean, it's almost to the point where we're not making any money. Which proves that I just really want to help you guys. Anyway, yes, thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, I'm about to hit the road. I'm going to go to Utah. for a few days, actually more than a few days, more like seven or eight days. Um, but we will have episodes of the podcast. The podcast will be coming to you from the road. Until then, guys, keep being creative. Keep pressing the boundaries. And there's nothing wrong with being independent. See you in the next episode. Thanks for joining us for the Steve Freeman Podcast. Podcast. Be sure to subscribe and follow Steve on social media at, at the Steve Freeman. 